What is up my fellow Twebians? I am Logan the Totally Epic Gamer and today we're going to be going over tips of how to increase your expedition tier or some people like to call them the challenge tier. So first I think it's important to understand what's really holding you back in the first place. I see people talking about the same thing as they're stuck on tier 9 or they're stuck on tier 11 and I'm just going to go over quickly why that's kind of happening. So as you can see Starting at tier seven is usually when people see, start to realize like, oh, this is getting a little bit harder and I'm getting a little bit more stuck here. So from tier seven to tier eight, it's a one level jump. Okay. And that can be pretty difficult, but the real difficulty comes from tier eight to tier nine. That is a two level jump. Okay. And levels in the late game are massive. They're almost at least 16%, 17% uh, more difficult, right? And so when you jump up to you're cumulatively going up even farther than that you know you're doing you know 16% on top of 16% but multiplied by each other it makes it a lot more difficult you're looking at almost about 40% more difficult than you would have expected right so this is a huge increase in difficulty right and you'll notice the same thing happens from tier 10 to tier 11 so right as you start to feel like oh yeah I beat tier 9 oh yeah I crushed tier 10 and now I'm on to tier 11 I'm going to crush this too and then it you know stomps you back down again and that's because again you have another two level jump you're looking at something that's instead of 16% more difficult 40% more difficult than you were just going at so the first tip I have is pick an expedition that you feel you're good at right something that's easy something that's quick something that you feel you can really take control over chem plant is an obvious one for everybody chem plant is very easy it's very straightforward it's hard to die and it's easy to run away right so that's usually what the issue is is people feel like they're dying too quickly you know if you get jumped by two brood mothers or a lot of perfora you might just get you know bonked right away and that can become very difficult chem plant doesn't have too much of that even at the very end of the level when you do fight the perfora you have a huge huge room to run around in so you won't have as much difficulty there uh so chem plant's great boomtown is really good for actually a different reason and boomtown's really good because it's short so even if you screw up and die really quickly which doesn't happen too often in boomtown but obviously if you're having difficulty it will pose problems but you can get right back to it and get pretty far in very quickly frontline for me as a devastator i find is really easy although moloch can be kind of a pain at the very end i find the lead up is quite easy some other easy ones other than uh, chem plant frontline and boomtown are the drought palace archways of enoch and mountain outpost i find that those are a little bit easier than the others and so i would start there if you're getting really stuck and you feel like you can't progress moving on from there one of the things that you can obviously do is farm the lower tier levels. And the reason you're gonna be farming the lower tier levels is so you can farm up more resources. Maybe you're low on titanium and you can't upgrade your gear. Maybe you need more drop pods to upgrade your gear. Well, this is where you're gonna to have to go. And you, you, you have to drop down one level, but you can still upgrade to the level 46. So the level 44 stuff is gonna be really easy and you should slam through it pretty quickly. And that's great, because that's what you need. You need some upgrades, you need some gear, you need some resources, and you just need to farm a little bit. There's no reason slamming your head over and over against uh, level 46s when you're having so much trouble and you're not even getting close. Like if you're close, keep doing it by all means. But if you're not, it's time to grind a little bit, build up to that next tier level. And I'm sure that you won't have as much issues with 12, 13, 14, because those are all one level jumps instead of a two level jump. So you might just have to take it a little bit slower here and farm some tens or farm some eights as you get ready to take on nine and 11, right? And speaking of upgrading gear, we're just gonna go over some very efficient ways to upgrade gear that is important to being able to get through challenge tiers, right? Because as I said, you're going to be confined on resources and it's going to be very tight. So almost always, you just want to upgrade the part of your build that is the most important to you, okay? If you are a rounds based build, like blighted, twisted, pyro rounds, whatever, your most important thing to you is your weapon. That is the first thing you are gonna to wanna to upgrade. You're gonna to wanna to level that up as much as you can because that is your key to victory. And that's where you wanna spend all of your time. Raising attributes won't really help that much unless it's you're sure it's gonna be your end game gear. Don't really worry about it too much. Just focus on leveling it up. And I'm gonna show you why right here. So when you go from level 43 to 44 on this gun, you're looking at a 5K jump on firepower alone. Now that's not even looking at what happens to my mods from you know, 21.7 to 26.9 on Claymore, and then 14.2 to 17.6 on Legendary Minefield, right? Those are huge jumps in numbers. You're seeing huge increases on your availability to do damage, right? 
So that's what you really want to focus on. Those are your big ticket winners if you're a round space build. Now, if you're more anomaly focused and you're worried about your mods that give you extra base damage to your skills, like as a devastator that this character is, of course, for me, the most important part is me using Earthquake over and over. So I should focus on upgrading this piece of gear that has ground crush within it. And you might think like, well, what does it matter? Mods are all the same, but that's not really how it works. When mods have a skill-based damage to it, it's actually tied to the item's level. And what I mean by that is you can see here, this gives 35.3K more damage to Earthquake, right? As a level 46 piece of gear. But if we go to here, and this is level 44 piece of gear, and I go to the same mod, right? And I increase it, right? Earthquake's only giving 22.9. I'm losing 13K damage on just a mod that I can move around. So that's what I kind of mean when you're talking about mod management and how to manage your upgrades, right? So you can see I left these this gear alone. It's is activate one more time before cool, going cooldown, right? That's not going to get better with a higher level. Of course, I'm going to get more armor, but you need to prioritize your upgrades. And for me, since my weapon is less important for me and I'm an anomaly build, I focus on getting this piece of gear up that has the right mod on it and of course i can actually shuffle that mod around and if i wanted to if this was level 44 and this is level 46 i would just switch the mods and that's a good way to get an easy upgrade for that that only costs leather right so that's kind of just how you want to work on upgrading your gear now if you are at a point where you're not really attached to any gear you don't think it's too great and you see some tiny upgrades it might be a really good idea to focus on uh, rare type guns okay or a rare type armor and there's a really good reason for that as you can see this level 45 weapon right and it's rare when i go to level up it takes a thousand iron i'm sure everybody here has tons of iron as resources you don't use it too often in the late game so you have tons of it but it still upgrades rare gear right now when i go to the epic gear level 44 two levels down it takes drop pod and titanium okay so that's a lot you know, you're asking for a lot of resources that I'm very confined on in the first place. Now, if I just go here and go improve rarity, it takes just titanium to go to from 46 to 46 epic. And I'm taking what a 2k jump on firepower and an extra mod slot. This is a much cheaper, much more efficient way to increase your gears level and increase your ability to do damage or survive more. Right. So that's just kind of a little tip of something that can actually be huge you're going to save yourself a ton of drop pod resources you're going to get free levels up and it's kind of just showing why rare gear isn't that bad you can actually get a really good um like roi on it because you're just saving a ton of drop pod and a ton of titanium so it's really really good in that sense past that it's uh convenient that this guy joined me i actually have no idea who this is matchmaking is my actual last tip right so we've kind of gone over the the four so far choose your expedition right right make sure you grind easy ones and that you're not doing anything too crazy go to the lower levels if you need to and now we went through modding you know where to prioritize your upgrades and also using rarity and exploiting how many resources you have and using them to the best of your ability the fifth tip is matchmaking tiers are easier with more people in your party there's more people to revive you they do maybe more damage than you do. Maybe they have a better build than you do. It's an easy way for you to get past a tier that maybe you're having trouble with and maybe others are having trouble with as well. And with that, that's all the tips for how to increase your challenge tier. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope your expeditions go well and I hope you guys are all tier 15 gold very shortly. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.